Bird in the corner, double fake, jumper, it's good! Larry Bird! It was 1989, and the Celtics were not the kings of the East, and Larry Bird wasn't the king of the NBA anymore. You know, to his credit, he gets up and fights through it and goes out there and plays, but he is not a healthy person right now. And the reason was simple, a double Achilles tendon surgery. Now, Bird had already proven everything in the NBA. He was a three-time champion, a two-time finals MVP, and nine-time All-NBA first team. He was, I don't know, it, it may not be a real word that I'm, you know, to describe, but it, it just say he was unbelievable in, in that series, and he was great. But his injury had sidelined him for almost 12 months, and his status in the league was in jeopardy. The Celtics now had plenty of competition. More and more competitive teams were aspiring to become a dynasty. The golden era of the 1990s was beginning, and with it came superstars of all types who would deliver unrepeatable performances. And the East was now dominated by the Detroit Pistons, who the previous season had eliminated both Boston and Chicago in the playoffs. Behind them, the perennial contenders, the Bulls with the legendary Michael Jordan and the great Scottie Pippen, who had been the last season's most improved player. The Bulls were looking to overtake every team in the league, but what they didn't expect was those that they thought were dead still had a lot to say. Since Larry Bird was injured in that game against the Miami Heat in November 1988, he had gone through a long recovery process. A process that lasted 12 months and sidelined the forward for the entire regular season. And when he finally returned to full health, Bird wasn't about to stop being Bird. The problem was that in only his second game back from injury, Larry had a really tough test. He had to play the Chicago Bulls at the United Center. And well, the Celtics logically still relied on their star. I mean, it's true that Robert Parrish was already 35 years old, Kevin McHale 31, Dennis Johnson 34, and Larry Bird 32. Their most important players were reaching the end of their careers. But management was confident that if they could recover the best version of Bird, they could still fight for everything. A situation kind of similar to what teams like the Lakers or the Warriors are going through today, who've been trying to get back to where they were a couple of seasons ago with a team that's going against the clock. But man, the Bulls were no longer that team Bird had managed to overcome with ease throughout his career. They had got Pippen with the fifth pick in the 1987 draft, and although he didn't make much of an impact during his rookie year in 1989, he was coming off being the most improved player. And then there's Jordan. He was a thousand light years away from the Jordan of 1986. He was an even better scorer. He was more of a leader. And every day he seemed more unstoppable. That's why when November 4th, 1989 arrived, the game between the Chicago Bulls and the Boston Celtics had a clear favorite. I mean, the Bulls had reached the conference finals the previous season, and the Celtics had fallen in the first round. Jordan was confident that this time he could finally beat Boston, even with Bird available. And he was certainly starting to have that extraordinary talent around him as well. Oh, and by the way, this game wasn't just Bird versus Jordan. The Bulls had John Paxson playing, and the Celtics had Jim Paxson, who was his brother. Both sons of Jim Paxson Sr., who played two seasons in the NBA during the 1950s. And I say this because one of them is going to be very important later. Trust me, you'll see. So finally, the referee throws a ball in the air and a game started that would make one of the two teams lose their undefeated record. Both franchises came in with a record of 1-0 after all. Now, already in the first actions of the game, Bird shows his great vision, finding Jim Paxson while cutting from the top of the key. Now, if you usually watch the channel, you would have already seen many times how Larry was able to make plays from the low post with ease. The Celtics knew they had a lot at stake, so they came out very aggressive on defense, too. A clear example is this action in which John Bagley steals the ball from MJ and finds Bird, who finishes the play with an extremely tough high floater. Now, Boston was a team that that season ranked well above average in offensive rating and slightly above average in defensive rating. But if they wanted to beat the Bulls at United, they knew they would have to tighten the screws. Another clear example of this is how Bird just jumped all over Jordan. He had to make sure he got zero open looks. And throughout the game, you could just see the tension between the two stars who knew they had to go at it. As always, Bird was a menace from the low post. He just wanted Scottie Pippen, who was guarding him, to have nightmares that night. But his fadeaway from mid-range was always unstoppable. On this play, Bagley again found Larry wide open thanks to a nice parish screen and some lazy defense by Scottie, who gave him twice as much room as Bird needed to score from one of his hot spots. 
But of course, Pippen was no longer a rookie. The kid had become a man and had plenty of poise to go after Larry on the other end of the court. Just look how he fearlessly goes to the hoop to score the layup. And of course, Michael was also starting to get himself going too. In fact, the Bulls were leading the way during the early stages of the game. Here's a perfect sign that age was starting to take its toll on the Celtics. Kevin McHale knocks down an elite fadeaway from the low post, but the Bulls come out and transition at light speed with their fresh legs, and Pippen gets a free dunk on the fast break. But again, Bird responds with a deep midi with shots like this one, where he practically is a step in front of the three-point line. The whole world knows that this is a literal layup for Larry. And to cap off his spectacular first quarter, he scores another bucket from the low post. This time, attacking the rim instead of looking for the mid-range. And watch how Pippen, who is a great defender, just can't do anything at all. Now, despite Bird's 10 points in the first quarter, the Bulls were leading 27-31. In addition to Jordan and Pippen, the Celtics also had to keep an eye on other Bulls like Bill Cartwright and Horace Grant, who also came out to play that day. But Larry was already beginning to realize that it was going to be very difficult to beat Chicago on this day. The second quarter didn't have much of a story either. The Celtics managed to get three points back on the scoreboard to go to halftime, trailing by only one point, 49 to 48. And thanks in part to Larry, who with actions like this was able to score from very difficult positions. Look at this textbook hook shot. From the low post, Bird not only would hit you with a fadeaway, he would switch it up last second and finish with a hook shot. Bird was different, okay? And then also with open shots like this one from mid-range in which Ed Pickney uses the confusion of the loose ball to find Bird in a good position. Honestly, the Celtics weren't that far behind. Yes, the Bulls at that time were a better team, but Boston had enough firepower to pull off the upset. Yeah, sure, in a seven-game series, it seemed like a long shot, but on any given night, the Celtics could beat anyone. And in only his second game back from injury, Bird had 15 points at halftime. And there was no better sign for Jimmy Rogers that things could turn out well. Bird started the second half the same way he ended the first with a shot in transition from mid-range. But the talk given at halftime by Phil Jackson, who, by the way, was coaching his second game as head coach of his career, seemed to have given Chicago's players some wings. You know, with this bucket by Jordan, the Bulls took the biggest lead of the night, a seven-point difference. And boy, did that raise their spirits. Look at this full court lob pass from Jordan to Pippen showing the chemistry they were starting to have. Mike practically threw this pass from his own three point line. But of course, Bird would answer right after. He was like, you know what? Now you're gonna see how we do things, young man. And he goes on to score in the exact same way, catching and finishing a full court outlet pass. Nevertheless, the Bulls managed to win the third quarter by four points and extend the deficit to five. And with 12 minutes to play, the Celtics had to outscore the Bulls by six points playing away from home. So to accomplish this impossible mission, Bird went to work. In this play, he doesn't even need to catch and shoot right away to score. He's able to create his own shot from mid-range after a pass from Bagley. And by the way, the Celtics point guard finished the game with one point and 10 assists. And Bird was still at it, using Kevin McHale's screen to get open at the right wing from where he scored once again. And the Celtics were starting to come out on top and managed to finally get ahead on the scoreboard. Now, you remember the Paxson brothers? Well, John, the one that played for the Bulls, had a pretty good game. He had 11 points and 6 assists. But you know what his best play was? Well, look at this. The man scored the most pressured mid-range shot of the whole game to tie things up with only a few seconds left. An impossible shot that allowed the entire United Center to dream of victory yet again. But it was at this moment when Larry Bird had them all wake up. He scores again a spectacular fadeaway from the low post against two players, Michael Jordan sprinting over to help, but it wasn't enough. Larry absolutely silenced the whole gym and showed that he was the same as he had always been. After the Celtics defense didn't even let Jordan fully shoot the desperate shot to try to win the game, it was over. Boston had outplayed Chicago. Larry Bird had been once again superior to Michael Jordan. More than 300 days after injury, Bird returned to the courts. People and scouts were doubtful as his injury was very serious and the forward was already 31 years old. However, surgery had come a long way since that time, and Larry once again demonstrated his ability to survive when he returned. The Celtics won again in a matchup that they had always, from the beginning, dominated. But the Celtics would get a reality check. In a playoffs in which the Celtics fell in the first round of Patrick Ewing's Knicks, 
Bird maintains stellar averages of 24 points, 9 rebounds, and 9 assists per game. But his supporting cast was no longer the best in the league. It was no longer the most dominant. A new era of basketball was dawning, and the next generation was taking over the league. But still, Bird knew something. He knew that this entire generation aspired to do what he already did. Even though he was still making history, Larry didn't have to prove anything more in the NBA. He was once the best player in the world. He was once the absolute leader of his generation, and he won three NBA championships. And yes, he was entering the final years of his career, which were severely affected by injuries, but the bar he set was so high that his legend was already written. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it. Let us know what you thought down in the comments. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and we'll see you in the next one.